So we're gonna start here with a basic example of performing a z-test for a mean where we're given that the mean mu is $835 a month with a standard deviation of $53. And we want to test to see if it has gone down using a sample of 37 and a sample mean of $809 at a level of confidence or level of significance, 1%. So for this, we have to be very careful about pulling in all of the information that we're given here and what exactly we're looking for because we want to see if the cost has gone down. That is our alternate, which we make first, and our null is that it has either not changed or gone up. So when we're going to go in here, we're going to hit stat go to tests, and since we know the deviation sigma, we're going to use the z-test, where we have stats in this case. We are told that mu naught, the supposed parameter is 835, sigma in this case is 53, and we're comparing it to a mean x bar of 809, with a sample size of 37, where we're sure that we can use the central limit theorem for both reasons in this case, because it is both approximately normal to begin with and a large enough sample. Now from here, we are making the comparison that we have a smaller value here, that is we're taking a left tailed test. So we select that option here, the mu is less than mu not option, and calculate, where for here we get our z-score as well as our p-value. Now if we want to do a test using a critical region, which I'll show an example of as well in here, we would have to compare this z-score to the minimum fitting that 1% level, but since we're going to work using p-values instead, we'll see that the p-value here is right there, just a little bit less, so it's inside of our rejection region, and as a result, we can reject the null hypothesis in this case. So for our second example, we have that research indicates Gen Z watches 68 online videos per day with a standard deviation of 3.5. And if I'm assuming normality and have 25 of my students watch with a mean of 66.9 videos, I want to test this claim here. Be careful to notice the wording that I'm not checking to see whether the amount is bigger or smaller in particular. I'm just saying that I think it's wrong. So when we're going to put this in here and test it using a p-value, we're going to go back into that menu. Since we have that standard deviation of 3.5 is implied to be with the population, we're going to use a z-test where we're going to use stats. Here we have the mean is 68. The standard deviation is 3.5. The Sample mean is 6.9, and I asked this for 25, so that is our sample size, where here, since I'm just looking for any difference, we are going to select the mu does not equal mu not option, where we're going to be careful here to pay attention to the fact that the level of significance here is 5%. That number is very important as it determines what will happen at the end here. And running it, we end up getting a p-value of about 11.6%. Now we also get that z-score. Z-score is important if you want to do the critical value test, but that's not what we're interested in right now. Here, what it means that we get a p-value of 11.6 is that our rejection here, our result, actually isn't that unlikely in terms of the distribution we're assuming actually holds. That is, 
we get a probability here that says it's an acceptable case of being unusual. It's not strange enough that it indicates something is wrong with our parameter. It is just a little bit odd. So it's not enough evidence to go against what we're working from. And as a result, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Okay, so now we're gonna get one example here where we have to do this type of process, but we're using the rejection region and critical value method instead of the p-value method. So here we've got a lot of information that we're working from in terms of this distribution, but before we go to that, we should jump straight down to see our level of significance here. Our willingness to be wrong is 5%. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Where here, we're testing to see if the mean salary is less than that of a competitor, which is 88,200, where we take a sample of 20 with a mean of 85.9, a standard deviation of 9,500, and even though it's not the biggest sample, we assume normality so we can get what we need. So here, because we're looking for less at alpha equals 0.5, that means that 5% is going to be in the left tail. So when we're thinking about these types of things, we're thinking about our null and alternative, we are making a left tailed test. We're looking for smaller things. And because we're thinking to the left, when we want to find that critical value, what we're going to do is go into inverse normal and plug in that 0.05 because we have 5% to the left, 5% in just that tail, where that's going to give us a z-score of negative 1.645. Just keep that one in, your, in the back of your mind. We'll come back to it later. So that's our critical value for what we're going to look for. And I'll explain how you make the determination after we go through actually running the test here. So we again have stats where we are testing based on a supposed mean of 88,200, a standard deviation of 9,500, x bar here is 85.9, and we took a sample of 20 where we are running a left tailed test. Now here you can see this and you can look at the p-value and immediately recognize that the p-value here is too large. Or alternatively, if you want to think in terms of z-scores, note this z-score, negative 1.08, is bigger than the z-score we got from the critical region. That is, it's to its right. Now, it's a little hard to track all of these cases just thinking about them abstractly. So with these, it's very important probably that you have a picture for yourself so you can understand what's actually going on here. But notice that we have our alpha level, 5%, which corresponds to a z-score of negative 1.65 in the left tail. And because our z-score, our score associated to the data we have, is to the right of that left tail, it's not in the rejection region, which means it is not unsuitably strange. It's unusual to be sure, but not so unusual that it indicates something is wrong with our assumptions. So again, we will fail to reject because here we are looking for a left tail and the z-score is greater. If we're looking for a right tail, we would check for rejection in terms of whether the z-score is larger in that case. If we had a right tail and a larger z-score, it would be in the rejection region and we would reject. And then with two tails, it's a little bit more subtle, but basically we don't want to see it land in either tail if we're looking for that case. But like I said, often we're better served using the p-values anyway, because we're going to get them along the way if we're using the calculator. It's just as well that we do that instead.